Hello everybody. Um, I was asked on the Board Game Geek to kind of show a sort of playthrough of BIOS Megafauna 2. I uh, hope you can hear me. I think I've tested it. Uh, everything should work on a technical level. I'm used to playing this on two monitors, so it'll feel a bit cramped to me, but yeah, this is working. This is working. That's, that's all right. That's all right. I'm not a professional, so that'll do. Um, what you see here is I've already done a bit of a setup. I've put out the four Kraton boards and I've, I've shuffled them. So this is all kind of a random setup. These numbers are the latitude dice, so these things might be able to move up and down during the course of the game. Actually, I'm pretty sure they, uh, they always will do that. So here we go. I haven't done all of the setup yet, so I can show you a bit of it. Um, where is it? Um, I'm just pulling it in here. This is the mutations window. Uh, I think I'm recording at 1080p, so you should be able to see most of it. And yeah, if you can't see it, I can't see it. Either. Um, there's lots of text on the cards. Most of it is flavor text. Actually, all of it is flavor text. Uh, the only thing that matters are the symbols. Uh, the little dice cubes. Yeah, it's, it's all simple on there. And the rest is pretty much flavor. So, if you develop filial cannibalism in the game, it basically just means you have a blue cube. Right. Uh, here we've got the tools. We'll get to these later in the game, if at all. And, right, I haven't done the era deck yet, so we're going to play through. Three eras, if I can manage. It's gonna be a bit of a longer game, but I kind of enjoy it having a bit more to do. So we're putting five cards in the first era. Three, four, and five. Whoops. I think it shuffles automatically, so it doesn't matter. And yeah, so the first era is five cards, the second era is five cards, and the third era is from one to four cards, and this comet sort of thing would be kind of ending the game. So we, we're not exactly sure when the game will end, we're just sure that it will end and that the ending will be a bit catastrophic. You know, like, like the end of the dinosaurs actually was. So we're gonna put this away for now. Uh, I don't think we need it right now. Uh, I have to set up the creatures. And we're going to play a, a three-player game, I think. I haven't done a three-player game on here yet. Uh, we're definitely going to use green. So where is green? Uh, it didn't show up. Now there it is. Uh, this is green. There are the plants. They've got two cards set up in the beginning. The, what was it? The Cytoskeletal Ossifyta. Uh, they just look like mushrooms to me, but they are a Cytoskeletal Ossifyta. And this is the newborn card, shows kind of how much the cards on the mutation deck cost. I'll bring it up again for reference. You see here there's five cards. And this basically shows what happens there. Right on. Uh, we don't need any of that yet. And this... This is actually one of my favorite parts of the game. I, I was a bit skeptical when I started playing because it's it's very powerful. But this is the Medea supervillain. It basically represents, uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek, evil microbes who are trying to get the world to move backwards, evolutionary speaking. And to pretty much wipe out all life on Earth and make everything go back to Single, single cellular life. So everything we've accomplished in Biogenesis, if you've played that game, uh, we want to remove that progress and well, pretty much kill everything. And the ones who are closest to wanting to do that are the, the plants. So the plants, they get this card. If, if the plants aren't playing the game, the person with the lowest skeletal number gets it. So right now it's the plants with skeletal number of one. Uh, we're going to be playing orange, because I like orange, it's a bit more distinct. And those are the snails. 
and can you still see still still see everything I barely I'm, I'm kind of covering everything up but that's fine and the third player will play as the endoskeletal vertebrate which looks like a lizard I haven't actually looked up all the scientific terms in the game yet because I've been too busy just you know messing around with the rules and actually getting it working so uh, once I actually have the game, once the pre-order arrives, I'll be all into that flavor stuff. But uh, right now, I'm I'm too worried about everything else. So we actually have to do something else for setup. We've got to do the size adjustment dice. We're pulling them up here. So everybody's size one, as you can see here. Everybody starts out at size one. That's very small. I haven't actually looked up what the scale's like. I think in American megafauna, I was from 40 kilograms to 20 tons. I think in this game, we start a bit smaller because the game's a bit earlier. So I'm just guessing that the first step is something from a few grams to at maximum a few kilograms. We're, we're pretty small in the beginning. From the pictures, I, I can't really see us being any big than that. Uh, sorry, any bigger than that. I just swallowed my words down. And right, our first creature. You can see here we have got these tokens. Uh, we've got five different species. Uh, player will be able to play. Everybody starts out with one species. I'll just drag them out here to to show them off a little bit more. Everybody starts with seven of them. And one of them is actually on the board. Got to get everything out of the way. And here we've got the white starting point represented by the white icon. This is our archetype species. They're actually the worst kind of creeple that you can actually have because they can pretty much be eaten by everything. While all the other creeples can only be eaten uh, by creeples of the same shape that belong to other players. There's exception to this, there's always exceptions to this, but we'll get to that when you come to it, hopefully. So that should actually be set up. Uh, we've got the super villain card. Let me bring up the mutations again to make sure because I don't want to have to get back to setup after I already started the game. That looks perfectly fine. And there we go. We can start the game. I'll bring these up again when we need them. Uh, maybe I should explain the board a bit. Oh, I knew, I knew I forgot something. I should have set this up before I actually started the video, but I guess it gives me a bit of time to explain what I'm actually doing, so that's perfectly peachy. Uh, you see the, the dots here, those white dots here and black dots here, which pretty much shows you where to put the discs. Uh, the black ones represent carbon, uh, at least as long as they're on here. Uh, this is the atmosphere. This is the. I hope you. I hope you couldn't hear that. My 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 wireless headset likes talking to me. Um, this is the atmosphere, and these are pretty much greenhouse gases. You can see here, there's lots of carbon in the atmosphere. Not actually that important for the greenhouse effect. Not as much as we are led to believe, just, you know, changes things around by a few degrees while there's actually more important greenhouse gases up there, but these are the ones that are affecting us, so... I guess they're important enough to actually put in the game. And here we've got cloud cover. Then... Actually, we've got too many. No, we don't have too many discs. Uh, oh, I actually have to bring up the manual because one of those cutouts will have a black disc. Oh, I, I think it was Siberia, right? Uh, the black discs on the board they represent mountains. They are uh, places where you cannot live. They're not, they're not just small mountains where there can be creatures. They're like the Himalayans. They're big, like Alps, and these would be frozen over. 
So I'm, ju I'm just making sure that's true. Yeah, we, we, we are using all the disks all the time. And this is basically uh, how much plan, uh, how many plans there are. Actually, this uh, the more plans to, uh, are on here, uh, the less plans that are actually on Earth. So this is basically just a resolve wall. And once they're actually in the game, there's going to be more oxygen. So uh, what that means is that uh, if there's more oxygen, the animals will, uh, will get more actions. I actually have to zoom in to show you this. Um, uh, these cogwheels basically show you how many actions the animals have. And the hearts show how many organs they are allowed. So the more oxygen there is on the planet, uh, the more oxygen there is on the planet, uh, the better for the animals, pretty much. They can be more complex, which is shown by this heart symbol, and they can ha they can move more and do more things and speciate and mutate all they want. While if there are there's barely any if there are any, barely any plants on the planet, that's just not going to happen. Uh, the plants work a little bit differently. They like it when it's hot. They don't really care if there's ox oxygen in the atmosphere. They produce their own oxygen. They like it if there's carbon in the atmosphere. It's pretty much fertilizer for the plants, actually. And... Yeah, uh, these cogwheels are the plant actions. So, in the beginning, I'm um, gonna have to finish this here. You will see that the, the plants get three actions and the animals only get two actions. Add, and add on to this that the plants can control the climate by, by the use of the Media Supervillain card and they are quite a force to be reckoned with. Their organs, meanwhile, uh, are on this track. They can have more organs. Right now they can have eight organs and the animals can only have three, but that's going to change soon enough. Uh, you'll see this is not linear. Uh, once there are no clouds and uh, no water in the atmosphere at all, uh, the, the plants, uh, well, they will just dry up. So there's less organs for them to be, uh, that they can have. So they kind of want to keep this somewhat in balance. They usually want more actions, but they, they don't want this to drop below, below six. So they, they have incentive to actually not have the earth go into a runaway greenhouse situation where it's just too hot for anything to live and uh, if that actually happens then the game ends on that turn so there's, there's quite a few things that can end the game right away there's this the atmosphere the runaway greenhouse and there's actually actually the development of language uh, which we'll get to. Uh, it hasn't happened in any of my games yet, so I don't think it's a big problem, but it's interesting. If you want, you can end the game early. Language gives extra points, so that, there might be a strategy in there if you get the right cards. Good. Uh, just let me check on my recording stuff. and It still shows I'm recording. Uh, 13 minutes, so it's still a watchable video. Uh, sorry about that. Like I said, I I'm not usually doing this. I'm not used to narrating these things. I don't really know what I should check beforehand. I'm just learning as I go along. Uh, we also need to put these on here. I told you that we're actually going to use all of the all the discs. Uh, this is carbon, basically sort of latched underneath the carton, the sort of small continental plate thingy. And these things uh, are pretty much uh, lodged in here, depending on how the continents move or, or whatever else happens. Uh, these disks might actually end up up there, uh, warming up the atmosphere. And these disks, these are interesting. I, I actually needed a game or two to understand how they work. Uh, they turn these offshore locations. These are the offshore locations. The, everything in the in the indentation here, all to the east, by the way, because of some reason. Uh, it was explained in the manual. There is a actual scientific reason behind it that it only happens in the east. I don't remember what it was. Probably something about currents and uh, where these things actually go. Uh, these are pretty much 
plants, no, not really plants, they can be plankton, which are, uh, I don't think those are technically plants. And they actually make these things habitable. So you can just imagine another hex here, a uh, bloom hex, a so-called bloom hex. They work like water hexes, pretty much. It's just that it's a bit easier for them to actually get removed and for everything to die because the plankton left. So they're less safe, but as you can see on the map, there's lots of green locations where your land animals can live, uh, the swamp locations as well, and not that many sea, sea locations. So the sea animals, uh, I'll just pull them up here. They got these shark meeples. Maybe have to zoom in on it. Yeah. Uh, these things, they can live on the swamps. You can imagine something coming out of a, a watering spot and just eating whatever poor creature tried to get get a drink. So they can live here and they can live in the water and on the bloom shelves. So there's actually a kind of a balance. So that there's not too much space for the water creatures to live, but then the water is a lot less contested. Because it's much easier to actually start on land. So we are on these three things. Uh, we have no disc left, so we are actually done with setup. Phew! That was, yeah, that was, that was just quite a bit of setup. If you if you're actually explaining everything as you're going along, it's it's not that long. Once you once you figure it out, it's not that harsh. Maybe the vessel module can include something. Uh, this strip basically corresponds to to this one. So right now we are in Eden, meaning. Uh, the climate is pretty much ideal for life, and this is uh, the corresponding strip we use. And we'll switch this strip out depending on what the atmosphere does, uh, what the temperature does, that sort of thing. Good. So let's get started. Uh, bring this back up. We're actually opening our first extraterrestrial card, our first event that uh, I'm sorry to say doesn't actually do anything in the first round. Uh, you've got these these little dots here. Uh, I'll zoom in on it. There you go. So that just shows player order. We can ignore all the other icons for now. This event does not actually happen. It's just for player order. So I'm not actually going to read it to you. You can stop the video and read it yourself if you really want. And there we go. Uh, black goes first. So we'll pull up black to make sure to look at what they, what they are actually doing. There are the the exoskeletal arthropods. So they have a skeletal number of three, which kind of sucks for them. Because the other ones have... Wait, black's not in the game. Black's not in the game, guys. Black's not in the game. Um, so the next one would be white. So white starts. Let's see. Does it suck being white? No, it does not suck being white because they've got a skeletal number of four, meaning if everything else is equal. Uh, that's kind of important. If everything else is equal, they are the best predators and they outcompete the other predators. So they are kind of predestined to be predators. Though right now, as you can see on the map, they are quite a uh, ways away from the other players. And to add insult to injury, uh, you can only switch from Kraton... I messed up there. Luckily, there's an undo, undo button. Uh, you can switch from Kraton to Kraton only uh, on these latitudes, so on latitude 3 and 4. Yeesh. I, I haven't placed these all too carefully, I have to make sure that's... E. So now, yep, yep, yep. Sorry for mumbling, guys. Uh, the, the, uh, that, that's just what I do. I mumble. Great. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm messing up the whole setup. There we go, and there we go. Okay, so now it looks now it looks a bit better. Okay, uh, to add insult to injury, uh, the the white player right now, as it stands, the plates haven't moved yet, can uh, only change uh, from Canton to Croton uh, by following the wind. So in latitude three, they can sort of raft uh, over this sort of ocean thing up to there. And it's quite expensive to, to raft. We probably won't be doing it in the first few turns. 
and uh, on the fourth latitude that's also possible on the fifth latitude as you can see on the strip here uh, there's, there's no wind blowing so that's not gonna happen so uh, everything everything everybody on in the beginning is kind of confined to their to their spot which isn't a bad thing because that means everybody can kind of get established before the mutual eating and extinctioning begins I'm I'm very proud of that word I'm very proud of that word okay so we've got the event so we are already in the action phase and I told you before uh, we've got two actions to begin with because there's not that many green discs in the game yet so with two actions uh, I don't know if I have a, a help thing that shows the actions uh, yeah I have it I can mutate meaning I buy an action from the mutation deck uh, this one here I can promote the mutation it means I can flip it around we'll get to that when we come to it as always I can speciate I can replace my species with another but uh, I need the correct mutation for that so that's not gonna happen either I can discard basal organs you don't have any of those so that's not gonna happen there's lots of things that don't happen in the first round I can resize my creature for one action so I can resize all my creatures by one that's one action so I could actually resize all my creatures and it just takes one action which is which is kind of powerful but uh, I guess otherwise uh, there would be weird issues with speciating and waiting with speciating. Uh, I, I'm explaining things to you that you have actually no need to know and uh, of which you can have no idea what uh, what I'm actually talking about, so I should just shut up. Uh, creature size can vary from 1 to 6. That's going to be important, as always, later, because this game has so many interlocking systems, I just... I'm just asking you to bear with me right now and yeah it'll all make sense in the end I'm sure I'm, I, I, I promise it'll make sense uh, if you've been wiped completely off the board which has not happened to me yet in two games on Vassal uh, then you can actually resurrect yourself so you're not out of the game you're, you're probably pretty much out of the game uh, when it comes to winning but you're not out of the game yet as such and what you also can do is claim the Medea card I'm not going to do that in the first turn because it's quite possible to get wiped off the board completely in the second round if you don't uh, if you don't populate if you don't uh, get more people so what we're going to do is we've got uh, six unborn creatures right now so we've got six of these things of these domes of our archetype creatures of our um, archetype creatures and that means we've got uh, six currency in a way it's uh, it's not really currency uh, but we can buy six mutations because you can imagine uh, smaller populations they are more likely to mutate and once they've spread out once there's lots of these creatures all over the world they are much less likely to mutate it kind of makes sense in my head it, it probably makes actual sense uh, I don't know the, the the real explanation for it but uh, it's it's a good system to have so uh, this means we can buy up to six worth of mutations every every buy action is one action so we can buy all these cards so th there's lots of options in the beginning and there's actually going to be less options uh, the more you populate on the board uh, what we do want is to have uh, have blue we, we want the blue cube because uh, everything blue is actually good for um, you know uh, making more of yourself so we could have windborne seeds now this looks like a plant mutation it looks very much like a plant mutation which is kind of funny because uh, well, the lizards are gonna have seeds, right? So we are gonna. This this is one issue I kind of have with the game. Uh, things 
often intermingle in kind of a strange way. So you have plants that do things like uh, I, in my last game I had a plant that had a kidney and because of the kidney it, uh, it was able to swim and it did it, it, it did not make much sense to me at the time I'm maybe there's an explanation for it I would not know and I guess my my lizards they are gonna have seeds right so that's my first action I took this and uh, without even mentioning it I picked up a blue cube and put it on the card you can see on the card there's this blue symbol that means there's one blue cube added to it so now uh, I'm going to do my second action and that will be to populate that's the, the populate action uh, on this reference card you can actually see as many newborns as blue cubes plus one so we get one two we get two newborns that we can put on here with the populate action. Right now they're still on this card, nothing else happens. So we've done our two actions and it's the next player's turn. That will be red or uh, orange. It's a bit confusing because on the cards it looks a bit more red than orange, but never mind that. Uh, because the previous player's turn is over, uh, these get replaced. So the, uh, the market row it moves in in this direction. Yeah. Let's start. Uh, and where do I have to point so you can see it? In in this direction. Okay, it's it's mirrored. Uh, everything's mirrored. Okay. Now we pretty much want to do the same thing. Uh, we do realize that if we do this we give the next player access to this card which I don't want him to have so that's that's a bit of a conundrum because this one gives two blue cubes that's quite scary but because I'm selfish and I I, I really want to uh, kind of compete I'm not gonna gimp uh, myself as the orange player and just and just deal with buying the card and giving the other card to the plant player who might once again be very powerful in this game if if things turn out like I think they might and uh, orange also populates puts two of their creeples of their archetypes on this card as you can see uh, now this uh, this player and also the white player they have four unborn creeples left so if they were to uh, if they were to buy cards now they could only buy up to the cost of four because they are most the more of them on the board so that's how it kind of balances itself out the more you're spread out on the board the more victory points you get the more the less like you are you are to just die from a volcano coming out of the ground and killing everything but uh, you're also less flexible. You can't adjust to what what the game throws at you as much. So, just because you lose a lot of creeples doesn't mean you're out of the game because you've got, uh, in a way, a catch-up mechanism, which I quite like. All right, uh, we are moving these along, and now it's the green player's turn. Right, and the green player's window is white. Now, now, now it's now it's alright. And they do what I uh, already told you they would. They pick up this uh, for orange. They, yeah, but put the cube on. They put the cubes on here. So now they can actually populate one, two, three. One for the populate action and two for uh, and one for each of these blue cubes. So there's going to be more plants on the field. All right then, I'm moving this out of the way because we don't need it anymore. It's still on my second monitor, so I can see it, but you can't. So I apologize for that, but I don't think there's a sensible way to make a video of both monitors. Whenever I do something, I'm gonna drag it in here anyhow, so that should be fine. 
and what else? Nothing else. We should have the help again. We are now in the mother and dispersal phase. So uh, this sounds more complicated than it is. Uh, this is again uh, in player order. Black does not play, so we start out with white. And white is going to disperse the lizards. We've got two lizards on here, and now they actually get to go onto the board. Um, now we choose a model creature. Right now there's only this one. So this is not a hard choice. Uh, we pick this one. And then we disperse from this one. So I put the creeple on the next hex. And I could also put it on here, because that's one space, two spaces, and the movement cost is for swamps and weeds, for the archetype creeple is one. And we've got two movement points. Movement points would be your blue cubes, that's the other reason why we wanted blue cubes, plus your size. So right now we have two movement points because we are size one and have one movement cube. Uh, not movement cube, because we have one blue cube. So the better a species are at procreating, the better they are actually at moving on the board. So I could go here. And I'll actually have to look something up in the rules for a second. I'm very sorry about that. Um, I think I'm actually allowed to take the second creeple as a model creeple and once again disperse from there. But I am not completely sure. So let's just have me look that up. Uh, there's always lots of looking up in my first two games. I thought I was going to be able to go without this time, but I just want to make sure I'm not telling you something that's not actually true. So there's a daisy chain rule, that's what I remember. Each daughter placed on the map can act as a model for the next daughter. Right. Wonderful. So it is how I said it is. No need to look it up anymore. It, it, it still feels a bit weird. So right now, we could try to go from here over to here. And that would cost, let me bring that up again. Rafting costs three for my archetype creatures. You can see it's it's a lot less expensive for the swimmers and for the flying creatures. But uh, this would be a movement cost of three, plus another uh, movement cost for entering this hex. So it would be a movement cost of four. We can't afford that, so we're not going to do it. We're actually going to speciate uh, on, on here. That's the best way to make our creepers most safe. If I went on here, uh, the, an event might happen where uh, this carton uh, somehow smashes in here, killing these two creatures, so we, we don't want that. We don't want that to happen. And now I messed everything up, I messed everything up. Uh, reset, reset. Uh, that, that That's what actually what it was. Ah, it was a mountain. Good. And that's it. Dispersal phase done. Simple as easy as that. Next player. I'm, I'm trying to speed it up for now. Because I know how it works. I've explained it to you. You can rewind if you want the explanation again. I think I've pretty much said everything important. I, I guess I can bring up the movement cost again as well. Uh, ice, that would be white discs on the, on the board, costs two. Mountains also cost two. So rafting is the costliest thing. And you always pay for entering the hex. We can even enter C hexes, so I could go here, but because I can't live in here, you see these, these X's on here, and they show you where you can actually live. If you can't live there, you're gonna be endangered immediately and your creature is going to die. So we're not going to want to do that. Right on, so we are going to do orange next. Orange is down there and is going to do something similar 
uh, they also got two movement points so they're going to move here and there hmm I, I did say I was going to move here wasn't I right sorry about that so uh, actually they're going to move here and here to have the greatest chances of survival and I picked one from the wrong spot okay but this 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 should be how it is and then last but not least is green who's got the best position being last on the movement phase is actually the best thing that can happen to you because you know what everybody else is doing that's that's quite a strong advantage for something that's randomly determined I'm still not quite sure how much I like it but since it's random every turn it should usually even out though there is a bit of a problem here I think game design wise that's very tough to solve because this is not the only game that has that problem there we go uh, we've actually got three movement points which means we still can't raft bummer but no but actually two movement points would be enough right now but later on they're gonna be important and we are actually much more spread out um, I think I'm moving this one here it doesn't matter if something crashes two creeples are probably going to die so uh, it's not that likely as I'm making it out to be but it's just a consideration I'm making here so we're done with that then we've got the burial phase uh, right uh, right now we would have contests because right now there are no contests we don't actually have to do anything and what else A dispersal of endangered endotherms we have no endangered creatures and no endotherms yeah I know you don't know what that means and uh, the fossil awards and final scoring if this was the last extraterrestrial card in the deck so every five turns there is a sort of intermediate scoring round and that will be the first turn of Bios Megafauna 2 um, I think that's actually quite a lot to absorb I could continue on in this video I, I don't think I'm going to do that I'm going to make another video for the next turn so just to you know cut it up a bit make it easier to Watch this thing in segments. We haven't discussed a lot of things yet, like the, the yellow cubes and the red cubes on the board. You don't know what the green cubes and the white cubes are for. They're all kinds of organs that are used for competition in different ways. Uh, you don't have, actually have to worry about the dice on the on the uh, on these. Uh, these are pretty rarely used only if something particular happens like a volcano comes out then uh, random places on the board are going to be impacted but that does not happen too much and it's only one spa one hex so you're not you're not going to lose uh, if you if you do what I did in the first turn and populate once or twice then you're going to be spread out enough that you're not in danger of immediate extinction so you you're actually going to be able to play this game pretty much no matter what happens so even though it's a philacland game you don't have to worry about that um, we're going to get into all the contest rules and battles and everything else that happens in the game in the next video so thank you guys for watching I hope it was informative and uh, I'm it's it's possible to listen to me uh, it's was, it was actually fun making these I guess I understand now why some people make these board game videos I, I don't have a camera to do it with actual board games which is a bit of a bummer but uh, this vessel thing works reasonably enough I guess uh, I hope it's the resolution is good enough that you, you, it, it should be right you see you see what I see so see you guys next time and thank you for watching I'm dragging it out right now without actually helping you anymore so I should just quit as, as far as I'm ahead right um, yeah, this was me tune in again next time for the next episode of Bios Megafauna 2 right